Um, as you can see here, we're zooming in in this fold of the cerebellum, and we'll be talking about uh, major inputs that actually projects to this cerebellum. We have two major inputs. First input is from um, the sensory nuclei in the spinal cord. The second input is from the inferior olive of the middle. I would like to note here some of our structure that we already uh, introduced to you, which are um, Purkinje cell plays a major role. We have the granule cells that are the member that the, the, the only excitatory cells. We have mostly fibers, and our our Golgi here, the orange guy with the mustache. We have basket cell and stellate cell. Now I would like to follow and 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 take you with a tour in how the input actually turned into an output that actually in the end projects to the thalamus and then to the motor cortex. Okay, I'm going to walk you from the first input, which is the sensory nuclei, from the spinal cord and brainstem. Mostly fibers from sensory nuclei synapse on the granule cell at this region. They synapse which is axons actually from parallel fibers that innervate Purkinje cells. So as you can see from granule cell, we go, those fibers actually become horizontal called parallel fibers that actually synapse with Purkinje cells. It synapses with the dendrites of the Purkinje cells in this region, which produce simple spikes at high frequency. The other input is from inferior olive, and that's why you see a little olive climbing, because it's climbing the climbing fibers. It goes from the inferior olive in the medulla, it goes up climbing fibers that actually synapse on the dendrites and the soma of the Purkinje cell, making complex and low frequency spikes. Those spikes integrate and the output will be synapsing with the deep cerebellar nuclei and it's always, as we said, inhibitory synapse. And then goes, projects to the VLC in the salamus, which actually projects in the end to the motor cortex that initiate the movement. There's two major things that I would like to, to mention in this whole circuitry, that we have two regions where we have inhibition, two major regions. We have lateral inhibition, which is between stellate cell and basket cell. This inhibition is called lateral inhibition because it sharpens the excitation in certain areas by suppressing it in another. The another another region of inhibition is called the rosette, which is which involves Golgi, mossy fibers, and portion of the granule cell. Those two inhibition regions work into tuning the motion of um, in the cerebellum. So, what's the goal of this circuit? The goal is to com to compare the actual feedback with the expected feedback to fine tune the motion. Again, it's very important to note that cerebellum cortex do not initiate movement, but rather coordinate. The initiator we will talk about in another movie is the M1, which is the primary motor cortex. I would like to make a little summary about the whole thing we talked about today and about this circuitry specifically and say that cerebellum receives two major inputs, one from the sensory system from spinal cord and the other one from the other parts of the brain. It actually integrates the, these sensory inputs and fine-tune our motor activity. That's why when somebody has damage to the cerebellum, he does not have paralysis, but rather ends up in a disorder of the fine movement, such as balance and adjusting the motion. 